Hi, welcome to AlgebraClass.com. This lesson is on calculating slope. Whenever you hear the term slope, you probably think of a mountain, like a ski slope. A ski slope has a particular steepness, or you would not be able to ski down that slope. And that's typically what we refer to when we're talking about the slope. We think of how steep a hill or a mountain might be. In math, we will use some problems to determine how physically steep a hill or mountain or some sort of line may be. But we may also use it to measure how something changes over time. And you'll see this when you get to the rate of change lesson in the graphing equations unit um, because that's where we will also refer to slope. But whether you're talking about the physical steepness or rate of change and how something changes, you're always going to use a specific formula for calculating slope. And that formula is that slope equals the rise over the run. We know that every line or every mountain, every hill rises or falls and it runs either to the left or to the right. And that's where we get this particular formula. So whenever you write slope, you're going to be writing a fraction. The numerator is going to be whether it rises or falls, up or down, and the denominator is going to refer to whether it's running left or right. Okay, so keep in mind that you're going to be writing a fraction, and that fraction is going to be the rise over the run. Okay, a couple things that you need to think about when you're calculating slope couple rules is the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to find two points on the line. Those two points have to be exactly on the line and they have to be points that you can read and that you can identify accurately. You're going to use those two points to count the rise. So you're going to be thinking how many units do I need to go up or down to get to the next point. That number again is going to be your numerator because the formula for slope is rise over run. So the rise is in the numerator. Then you're going to count the run. How many units do you have to go left or right to get to that point? That number is going to be your denominator. And then you would always simplify that fraction if possible. The one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that whenever you're counting up or right, that number is always going to be positive because those are our two positive directions. Whenever you count down or to the left, that number is always going to be negative because those are our negative directions. Okay, so let's apply this and look at our first example, which is the first example on the website. This is a line. This line represents the equation y equals 2x minus 3. And I'm going to ask you to calculate the slope. The first thing that I want you to do on any paper that you're working on, any problem that you're working on, is I want you to write the formula. The more times that you write this formula, the better you're going to remember it. So slope equals rise over run. It will be written as a fraction. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to identify two points on that line. So the first point that I'm going to identify is right here at negative 3 on the y-axis. That is a definite point on the red line, and I can identify it as 0, negative 3. I need to find one more point. Now you might think, oh, I'll go choose the point on the x-axis. This is not going to be a good point to choose because it's between 1 and 2. I can't identify this point accurately. So that's not a good choice. You want to find another point, like this point right here which is at 2, 1. I can identify that accurately and it's on the red line. Okay. Another point that you could choose, which will be closer, is this point right here at 1, negative 1. That might be a better choice because it's closer to your first point. But as you can see, I can choose many different points. I could choose this point as well. It doesn't matter which two points you choose as long as they're on the red line and you can read them. Now what you're going to do is you're going to count. That's all we do when we calculate slope is count. The first thing that I'm going to count is the rise. So I'm going to identify this as my point 1 and I'll identify this one as point 2. 
I'm always going to go from point 1 to point 2. So I'm going to start at point 1 and I'm going to ask myself how far do I have to rise to get to the line where point 2 is. So if I start here I'm going to rise 1, 2. So I've had to rise 2 units to get from point 1 to point 2. I went up, up is positive, so 2 is positive. Now I'm going to run and I have to go left or right. From this point right here, I have to go to the right. I'm going to the right one unit to get to that point on the line. So my run is one. So the fraction that I've written for slope is two over one. And I can simplify that now to two. So the slope of this line is two. Now, I want to point something out I'm going to redo this problem, and I'll redo it in green. And this time, let's say that I picked this point as point 1 and this point as point 2. And I might say to myself, am I going to get the same answer? Because this time I'm going down. So how can I get the same answer? So let's see if this works. If I choose these two points in the line, I start at point 1. My rise is actually going to go down to point 2. So I'm going to go down 1, 2 units to get to this line where point 2 is. Remember that when I go down, my rise is negative. So that's negative 2. Then from this point, I have to go left. Remember that a run to the left is also negative. So I had to run to the left one unit. So that's negative 1. Then I need to simplify. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. Because negative divided by negative is positive. So either way I ended up with the same exact answer. And you will too as long as you pick two points on the line. Okay, so that is example number one on the website. And if you want to flip down and look at example number two, we'll do this problem together as well. Again, you always want to write the formula for slope, which is rise over run. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my two points. I always love to pick a point if it's on the axis and it's readable. So I'm going to start here. That point is 0, 1. And then I'm going to find another point. And this point is the next point that I see that is on the red line and that I can read. So now I'm going to label this one as my point 1, this one is my point 2. So from point 1, I'm going to go down 1, 2. So my rise, I went down, which is negative 2 units. And then from here, to get to point 2, I have to run 1, 2, 3 units to the right. To the right is positive, so I'm going to leave 3 positive. So this means that my slope is negative 2 thirds. 2 thirds cannot be simplified and therefore it is negative. So I want you to notice that this line in example 2 when you read it from left to right it's falling and I had a negative slope and that's what you can do when you first look at your graph ask yourself when I read this from left to right like I do a book is the line rising or falling? If it's falling from left to right, you should have a negative slope. Go back and look at example one. When I read this line from left to right, it's rising and my slope was positive. So something to keep in mind, if the line is rising from left to right, it's a positive slope. If the line is falling from left to right, it's a negative slope. And that concludes our examples and our lesson on calculating slope.